Siam said, our pan is dead. His pipe hangs mute beside the river. And rounded, wistful sunbeams quiver. But music's airy voices fled. Spring warns us for untimely frost. The bluebird chants a requiem. The willow blossom waits for him. Our genius of the wood is lost. Then from the flute untouched by hands, there came a low, harmonious breath. For such as he, there is no death. His life, the eternal life of man. Above man's aims his nature rose, his wisdom of a just content, made one small spot a continent, and turned to poetry life's prose. Haunting the hills, the stream the wild, swallow and aster, lake and pine, to him grew human or divine, that made for this large-hearted child, such homage nature near forgets, and yearly on the coverlid, neath which her darling lieth hid, will write his name in violence. To him no vain regrets belong, who sold that finer instrument, gave to the world no poor lament, but wood notes ever sweet and strong. O lonely friend, he still will be, a potent presence though unseen, steadfast, sagacious, and serene. Seek not for him, he
It was the saddest happy man I ever knew. The happiest sad man, I think. It, he worked on Sundays and took the rest of the week off. <laughs> Who's this? Sure, Kane. Oh, yes, my, uh... Yes, my cane. It helps me walk. I wouldn't mind giving you so peculiar, but I have to warn getting so hard, David Henry. Henry David. Oh, getting everything back first. How do you learn your letters? Must the alphabet begin with A? Why not a Z? Oh, dear. Or mix them up. Start with H. Start with Q. Cast conformity behind you. Cast conformity behind you. Do you know what Diamond Henry Strombley is, John? What? He keeps casting conformity behind him. What the hell? He's been to Harvard. Never say Harvard. I'm so sorry, Mother. I'll never say Harvard again. <laughs> now, here's a rare specimen. Is this one wild or tame? Wild, I think. Known to haunt the woods and ponds. Dull plumage. But a wise bird. Americanist. Something or other. I've got it. It is the species. Brother! John! Welcome home. How's your overstuffed brain? I've got everything already. Well, at least you've got a diploma uh, from Harvard. No, I don't. Why not? They charge a dollar, and I want to pay it. But think how much Mama would love it. Your diploma from Harvard, framed on the wall. Let every chief keep his own skin. But it's evidence that you've mastered all the branches of knowledge. All the branches, none of the roots. John, I get more from one man, not even a professor, than I did in four years of academic droning and snorting at Cambridge. But the strangest thing, he wasn't a stranger. I knew him. I seen him. You know him. You walked by him on the street. You say hello. He's just a man, just a neighbor. But this man speaks and a hush falls over all of Harvard. And there's a light about him. It comes out of his face. But it's not the light of one man. I swear to you, John, it's light of all mankind. Idolator. Is this the earth? I hope so. No, it's you. And I, and God, and Mr. Emerson, and the universal mind. It's Aunt Louisa. <laughs> Yes, Aunt Louisa, false teeth and all. I know it isn't easy to think of Aunt Louisa swimming in the Milky Way. But that's the way it thinks, I'm sure of it. And if she can't keep afloat, <laughs> you'll dive in <laughs> and you'll save her. But now that you've turned your backside on Harvard, what do you plan to do? I think I'll think for a while. <laughs> that will be a change of college. But what do you want to be? Do you have any idea? Yes, I know exactly. I want to be as much as possible like Ralph Waldo Emerson. In my lecture tonight, I think I've read one paragraph twice. I lost my place. Nobody noticed. If nobody noticed, then nobody was listening. They thought you did it for emphasis. Well, just after that, I started thinking to myself. I thought I started to sound pompous. And dear God, dear Lydia, don't ever let me sound pompous. <coughs> I'm not getting to them at all. Of course you are. Well, do you see that fellow in the back with his eyes closed? <laughs> you don't think he was sleeping, do you? My friend! Huh? What? Every human being has an inalienable right to snore, provided it's not include other men's inalienable right to snore. I couldn't hear what's going on. Nothing goes on in here, not half the time, the day, the night. Don't make much difference. Shh, did you hear that? I didn't hear nothing. Just a bird. Just a bird? Can you make it sound like that? 
would you do to get yourself locked up? What do you think? Well, a man who talks to educated like you, he can't have done something small. It must be murder or worse. That's what I've done by their lights out in the dark. Murder or worse? No. I refuse to commit murder. That's why I'm here. Who do they want you to kill? Mexico. Who's that? That's where the war is. What war? <laughs> Friend, this cell may be the only place in the entire United States that's at peace. Who's fighting you? I'm not fighting anybody. Neither am I. But we've got a president who went out and boomed up a war all by himself with no help from Congress, much help from me. First I hear of it. <coughs> are you against them? Them. <coughs> or are you one of them? I'm one of me. Well, that don't make no sense. What'd you do? I'm waiting to try. <laughs> What'd you do? Nothing. What'd they say you did? Burned down a barn. But I didn't do it. All I did was snuck in to try and get them sleep, and I get the sparks from my pipe fell in the hay. Tell them that! Tell them time's a trial. That's what I've been waiting here for for three months. You've been locked up in the cell for three entire months, waiting for a chance to say that you're innocent? That's about it. That's outrageous! Sam! Sam Staples! No, don't make a ruckus. I'm not a troublemaker. All I want to do is earn my keep, make a little tobacco money, and get along. Get along? Those are turn my stomach, mister. What's your name? Bailey. <coughs> Mr. Bailey, what do you hear? Nothing, except footsteps. Footsteps of what? Of man, I guess. Where is he walking? I would, how would I know? I know where he's going. He's going where he's supposed to go, so he can be where he's supposed to be at the time he's supposed to be there. Why? So he'll be liked. My God, what country about the only one to be liked? But to be liked, you must never disagree. If you never disagree, it's like only breathing in. Never breathing out. A man can suffocate on courtesy. Common good be damned. Give me something magnificently uncommon. Now, I don't understand what you're saying, but it is a marvel to hear the way the words come out. <laughs> I'll put it in plain Anglo-Saxon, Mr. Bailey. You're an uncommon man who is protesting the barn builder who shut you with clapboard and daily working hours. Don't say that to no judge. If I burn down the barn, they'd throw me in jail. Where do you think you are? <laughs> you might as well have done the deed you didn't do. But I'm not a man who goes around burning things down. Good for you. Fire on the inside, but part of the fire on the outside. A man's conviction is stronger than a flame, a bullet, or a rock. months. Who'll leave my bean patch? <laughs> Maybe I can get some brain work done. It feels good to talk to a smart fella. I think you can even write. <laughs> Sometimes. I wish I was a writer. If I could write my name, I'd die happy. Well, you better off with those spiders. Bailey's a hard name at all. I know the start of it. I'll teach you the rest. Okay, ready? B. Huckleberry in the world. That's 
that's no way to learn anything. All they need to learn is clear the spell out and approve school tests. Oh, your partner here is actually really in God. You're a heathen. No, he simply asks why. If we never see a God, should we believe he exists? Matters of theology. Boy, are discussable with your spiritual leader. He already asked his spiritual leader. The Reverend, whoever it is, calls him an atheist. So he's made of water instead of death. Mr. Potter, I'll try to answer you just as I once replied to the same question put to me by a knowing inquisitive young man. Myself. Will this be a theological opinion? <laughs> it will be a human opinion. Now, if I go into a shop and see all the nicely finished wheels, gears, pinions, and springs of a watch spread neatly on a bench, then later find them put together exactly and working in unison to move the hands across the dial which has passed the time. Do I believe that this piece has been flung together by blind chance? Certainly not. I believe it's something with thought and plan and power has in there. An intelligence! An intelligence that governs the universe. And in this worship service, we shall celebrate our gratitude to that intelligence. Let us pray. Nor do I believe that the sun rising over Concord this morning was an accident. I hope you saw it, Mr. Potter. And you too, Deacon Ball, it was a brilliant sunrise. We are all related, Mr. Potter, and interrelated to a universal mind. That's atheism. I've often wondered, Deacon Ball, if atheism may be popular with God himself. Transcendental blasphemy. <gasps> the universal mind is the divine part of all of us, and we partake, knowingly or not, to the wonders of that universal mind. This all is beginning sense to you, Mr. Potter. That makes sense to me. You will teach textbooks, sir. I find your textbooks from behind the century. You find them so? Yes, sir, I do. And you choose to ignore the books which have been prescribed by the school committee? My students have the ache of curiosity, which I'm afraid your proscriptions will not cure. <laughs> Science! You will show respect to your elders, and your schoolmaster will teach a strict according to test in a Huckleberry.
for thine to teach the public schools of Concord. But I cannot comply with custom. I cannot perform the rites required of me by this congregation. So I resign my position as pastor of the Second Unitary Church of Boston. I shall never teach again. I shall never preach again. Henry, a school doesn't need a school committee, or trustees, or governors, or lumber, or the approved school textbooks. All a school needs is a mind that sends, and a mind that receives. Nobody teach anybody anything. Of course not. Teach them how to teach themselves. Our own. Cool, John. No filthy! Break out of the classroom prison! The university of the room, John. The great task materials of the Concord countryside. Students, watch, notice, observe, see what is around you. Did you ever have any idea so much was going on in Haywood's meadow? How weird you mean Haywood doesn't know? The zipper painting was already in flower. Last year didn't bloom till tomorrow. Do you have any idea how few people know it was just discovered? Stumbling across the first morning of a new flower. Most of Concord is too busy eating meals and going to the post office. I'd be sad and sorry to remember I was once in the world and never noticed anything remarkable. I'm not even a prince of disguise. Saw you a prince of disguise. Of course. Can you imagine living in the golden age and working as a hired man? Or visiting Mount Olympus and falling asleep after dinner, completely missing the conversation with God. Or imagine living in Judea 1800 years ago and never knowing that Jesus is my contemporary. And what? Henry, look, look. What are you doing? I'm writing. Why? What do you even say? So I'll remember. Don't remember what I'm saying. Remember what I'm talking about. Uh, who's that? It's a girl. <laughs> is she one of ours? I mean, is she belong to us? Is she one of our students? <laughs> I wouldn't mind, would you? John! <laughs> Excuse me, miss. But you look a little too old to be in this class. Henry! A young lady is never too old for anything. <laughs> well, it's just most of our students are 12 or thereabouts. And you're not exactly thereabouts. Does it make such a difference, really? I just want to come along and <coughs>
our feet, the infinity of the sky above us. And yet I have jotted down a note about a cloud play, or about sunlight on a bird's wing. Don't you write just because I am writing. Don't copy me. If you should merely to listen to the sky, or smell the sky, or feel the sky on your fingertips, do that too. Because I believe there should be as many different persons in the world as possible. So, each of you, be very careful to find and to pursue your own way. <clears throat>
sentimentalism? If you like. I think that's wicked. I think that's really nice. Who says it's wicked? Father. Last night at the dinner table, Edmund gave Father a sermon on the oversoul. <laughs> Good for Edmund. Most diamonds are cavern now because only Father gets the pulpits. Oh, he got it right back up. He was still shouting at breakfast. He broke off. He, he broke off with an incomplete sentence last night and picked it right back up this morning at porridge. <laughs> well, I'm a little older than Edmund. I get to hear the first valuable syllable advice from my seniors. We are born as innocents. We are polluted by advice. I have to go back. Why? Father expects me. Surprise him! Edmund did. He's braver than I am. Stand up to your father! No, Mrs. Crowley! Not in the boat. Oh. <laughs> Can you please walk back to shore? No! Listen to me. If I were to say, I love you, Sewell, Miss Sewell Ellen, you wouldn't think much of this statement of fact. We knew it was only an echo. I'm now thinking something somebody told me to say. But if I were to say, I love you, out of myself, out of my experience, I'm laugh of it, then you and God had better believe me. Mother, Henry's in love. Oh, who is he in love with? It's a church-going, educated girl.
be unthinkable. Amen. The throne must have any intention of marrying her father. But she stood up to him. I wasn't there. But evidently, she sat down. <sighs> See, he wasted six good summer Sundays taking her to church. When I asked her to marry me, there was a pregnant pause. Well, well not pregnant, but a pause. <laughs> <laughs> then she said, oh, dear. At first, I thought she was being affectionate. But then I realized she really said, oh, dear. That was <laughs>
child once myself, briefly. <laughs> it would be so nice for Edward to have someone who could take me boating and hiking. Dr. Emerson has so little time to be a father. He's so occupied with his writing and lectures. We're not with your son, Dr. Emerson. I'll turn my brain back on. Temporarily. Where's Edward? Edward! It's important, I think, for you to meet Edward to be sure that you two are companions. Why shouldn't they be? Yes, sir. A firm handshake, Edward, to Mr. Thoreau. You'll be extremely good friends. I don't say why not. How do you do, sir? Isn't it nice, Edward, having a new member of the family? Yes, ma'am. But we can't expect Henry to work for the same meager salary we pay Edward, which is nothing. If we make you any happy, I'll take the same pay as Edward. Try to be worth it. Henry, you're not a very good businessman. <laughs> I'm not a businessman at all. If you don't pay me regular salary, I don't feel obliged to keep regular hours. I never brought Mars into my life. Then be assured the work will be done. Then you must have weekly wages. So they have to have money. Can it be? How far does your back meadow extend? To the woods. Including the woods. A section of it, uh, to the shore of the ponds. Perhaps someday, my work has been of use to you, and if you remain friends, you can give me a small bit of it. Just a small square, no bigger than this room. Not as a gift, though. I don't want to own it. Simply as an understanding between friends who know that the woods really belong to the woodchucks anyhow. What will you do with it? I don't know. An idea I have. An experiment. Can Henry have his parcel of woods for his experiment? Well, I'm not too sure what this experiment is about, but if the woodchucks don't object, then why should I? <laughs> Thank you, Doctor! I mean, Waldo. Don't be too much a stranger, Henry. Uh, I might interrupt your work now and again. If you could help me mend a cracked wall or pull a few weeds in my lecture writing. I'm not a polite man. I'll be as frank with you as I am with Back Meadow. Not many people understand that young man. He wants nothing. Perhaps he wants too much.
sir, I do. My people? Now I'm easy. You're free. If you help you, I mean, I'll fire you. Now look here, Henry. You're going to pay your tax or not? Sam, do you pay your taxes? Yes, I do. If I didn't, I'd have to arrest myself. Are you going to arrest me? I want to arrest you, Henry. The government is thinking about taxes, especially when there's a war going on. After all, it ain't that much money. Wow. I'll pay for it. Don't you dare! Alone, just as you can. I will not pay one cup of pain to an unjust government. I will not be an attendant chair to the church, so I signed up for the church. Why am I ready to sign up for the government? Where do I sign, Sam? Where? You can't do that. Why not? Because even the president has to obey the laws. Call the poor president <coughs> for preserving his image and doing his duty. He doesn't know what to do. If the majority says... I'm the majority! A majority of what? I arrest him! Yeah! yeah. Thank you. 